Hi, guys. Welcome to another edition of Northern Transmissions. Thank you very much for listening. Um, I chatted with Eleanor Friedberger about her new record and her upcoming tour and a couple of other subjects. So here it is, and I hope you enjoy. And let's, let's get into the music right away. Here's the track, My Mistakes, off the 2011 Merge Records release last summer. You know I do my best Thinking when I'm flying down the bridge Coming to myself and Kicking up my chest I did my mind Eleanor and I chatted a little bit about um, 
working without her brother Matthew, um, her brother and longtime bandmate in the Fiery Furnaces, as well as working with producer Eric Bruchuk, who's uh, known for his work with uh, bands such as Free Energy, Cut Coffee, and Chick Chick Chick. I mean, odd. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, it was different mm-hmm. and fun. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm saying. Um, no, I don't know. On the last record, I'm, I'm Going Away, it was kind of the first time I'd done all my vocals without him being there. Um, so maybe that was a little bit of preparation. And then after that, Matt and I uh, released this album called Take Me Round Again, which was we like reworked all the songs from that album, and I had done that on my own as well. So I had a little bit of gearing up, you know, to doing something on my own. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, I am very used to having him, you know, either over my shoulder or, you know, I'm mostly, you know, kind of, uh, I don't know, giving him the stuff, the stuff, but he looks to me like, hey, did you like this, did you like that, or, you know, I'm kind of like the editor when he's doing 10,000 overdubs. Huh. Um, so that, you know, that was different, but this was fun, you know, I, I found a really great producer to work with, um, so we got along really well, and he's very... Uh, you know, he's a good musician, but he's also kind of very quiet and, um, you know, meticulous. Um, and I, I really just, like, presented Eric, Bruce, at the future with my demos, and, you know, he just helped me make them work and make them sound better. It was the recording sessions with Eric, or was, it, was he very hands-on uh, during the sessions, or did you know what type of sound you wanted and he just helped you to, uh, to refine that? Well, I mean, he was very hands-on, but we had talked about, you know, like I said, I made demos for every song, and in some instances we just, you know, like replaced the electric piano, crappy electric piano sound I had with a real electric piano. I mean, there was a lot of that, but, I mean, there were plenty of instances where I was like, I, I don't know what I want here, you know, and, and he, you know, he came up with something. So every song, you know, we had like a definite reference point. Um, in terms of like another song, we were kind of, not, uh, you know, I always say trying to copy. I mean, that's not the right word, but, um, you know, like the song Better Gold Year, you know, I, it was like, I gave Eric John Lennon's first solo album, which he didn't have, and I was like, I want it to sound like isolation, you know, uh-huh. I mean, that kind of stuff. That, that, that's how we work together. And that's, and that's actually how I've always worked with my brother, too. If I have some musical ideas, I mean, we always kind of just say, hey, can you send a guitar solo from Celebration Day? And, and we, you know, no one else really knows what that means. You know, we're not trying to copy it, but we just have, we know what that is. You know? You and me could go on and on and on and on, but it's not enough to not get along. And when you see my face and you see it change.
tonight from Eleanor Friedberger off the album Last Summer. Uh, thanks again for listening to Northern Transmissions. I hope you're enjoying uh, the show. If you want further information about Eleanor, you can follow her on Twitter at Eleanor Only, or you can go to her website at EleanorFriedberger.com or hit MergeRecords.com. Being a longtime member of Fiery Furnaces, I asked Eleanor what uh, had compelled her to put out a solo record. Um, I don't want to be overly dramatic about it, but I, I felt like I would regret not doing it, and the timing was right. It's the hardest thing to describe by the time, how timing works, you know, and all the <laughs> You know, it's just like, it's really hard to define. But, I mean, I felt like... You know, I'm getting older. If I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. And like I said, I had this time on my hands where I could just sit down and try and write a bunch of songs. And I was just in the right frame of mind, you know. Um, but it, they weren't songs that I had, like, laying around where I was like, oh, I don't want to show these to my brother because it's too personal or something. It wasn't like that. I, you know, I, all the songs on the album I wrote for, for the album, except for Glitter Gold Year, actually, which is something I just kind of said as a joke at New Year's Eve. Keeping on um, track with the songwriting process, pardon the pun there, um, uh, <laughs> uh, we talked a little bit about, uh, since Eleanor is a multi-instrumentalist, we just talked a bit about, about the process of her songwriting. Um, it's, it works both ways. I mean, I mostly have the lyrics done first, and then, you know, make like the backing track. That's kind of how I did this. And, and for the first time, I wrote most of the songs on a keyboard, which I'd never done before really. Um, so that was different. Now it was kind of like biting me in the ass now trying to play the song live. I mean, it, 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 it works well, but it's just now the, the new songs that I'm working on now, I'm trying to write them all on guitar so I can play them all by myself if I had to, you know. But um, I'm going to be a little bit more specific about it. But um, it was fun for me. I mean, the reason why I was using the keyboard is that I, like, finally got into using GarageBand and using, like, MIDI sounds and stuff like that. So, um, but I used, I, I, I had a lot of lyrics done, and then, and then I would make the backing tracks, and then I would make the, the words work, you know, for whatever tracks working on. A lot of your songs are, um, are about New York City, um, how much of an influence? I mean, the city has a lot of, uh, I guess the, the city has a lot of effect on you, effect on you as a songwriter, am I not right? Or? Yeah, well, I mean, yes and no, but I, I wanted to make an album that, that, you know, that was about New York and was, that was kind of had a, about, you know, myself when I first moved to New York. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it has. I don't want to, it sounds kind of corny to talk about it, but of course it has. You know, it's like it's where I've lived. The jungle is where I've lived as an adult. And, you know, um, it's my identity, I feel like, is wrapped up in living here, you know, and it's where I became a musician. And it's very, you know, it, it, is, it does have a lot of weight for me. And I still love living here more than ever. Um, and, you know, now it's finally giving me this sort of payback that I've been waiting for. In terms of like, I feel like there is a community of musicians here, and I have a lot of people I can rely on. And, and you know, I've lived in the same neighborhood for 11 years, and, and it, 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 does, it does mean a lot to me. Let's listen to a bit more music. Here's the song Early Earthquake off Last Summer from Eleanor Friedberger. There was an early earthquake, and my heart's turning just for you. It was an early earthquake, and my heart's turning just for you. And when the walls came crumbling, crumbling down, when the walls came crumbling, crumbling down, nothing I hear you. I chatted with Eleanor a little bit about uh, her involvement with the Cabinet of Wonders, um, with Tony Visconti and Todd Barry, among other people, as well as comparisons that have been made between her and Patti Smith. I, the guy who, um, whose show it is, his name is Wesley State, he's a buddy who's done with the heart, and he, he's been making records for years and years. And we, we, my brother and I uh, participated in the Dylan tribute concert last year, where I sang a couple songs, and so did he, so that's where we met, and he does this for like six months a year, and I, he asked me to do one um, earlier in the year, in February, I think, and it was really fun, and that was my favorite 
So it was actually a really fun night, it was really funny. You know, it was ever people. Yeah, a couple of comparisons to uh, Patty Smith. I mean, that's mm -hmm. pretty, pretty flattering company. Do you yeah, I'm not a big fan of stars of music, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I mean, as far as like being a personality and a, a great woman, you know, and someone who I truly respect and admire, I mean, yeah, it's flattering. But I, 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 I've always gotten that comparison. I think it's just, you know, mostly from the way you look. But I don't think music could really have a service. Yeah, music was a little different, that's why I was, I was kind of surprised, but it's just a very nice, uh, very nice comparison. Yeah, I mean, she's perfect, but I just, you know, I think if I didn't have brown hair hmm. uh, and would sit in, I probably wouldn't get that comparison so much. But. They got used bicycle pods down in Coney Island. There's a Russian there who makes them out on Fifth Avenue. I chose my seat and my wheels, one pink and one white. He said, come back in an hour, but I got nothing to do. I gave him 60 bucks, I guess they must have been. Stone and baby found, and finally they found their way, found their way back to me or oh, you.
the track Owl's Head Park. You might have heard a reference if you were listening carefully to uh, <laughs> to Christopher Walken. We talked a little bit about that and uh, her upcoming tour. Um, uh, no one tells me that. That's funny. Uh, it was something I, I was like in a bathtub listening to the radio, and uh, there was um, he was doing an interview on like, my favorite radio show in New York. And uh, I didn't know that he had been a dance, but I didn't know that his real name was Ronnie. And then I kind of like had a dream about it. Huh. You know, that, that, that's so silly. That's, that's awesome. Did you say his real name was Dominique? His real name was Ronald. Oh, 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 Ronald. Okay, okay. Yeah, Ronnie. Ronnie, that's great. That's great. Anyway, do you, are you psyched to be going out on the road with the Kills and Wild Flag, two, two pretty interesting bands, and... Uh, you have, obviously you have a band you're taking out with you, right, on the road for this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. And who, who um, is the same people that worked on the album? And that you're no, no. Um, the first, yeah, I'm really excited. These tours are going to be great. I mean, I'm so, it's been so long since I've been the opening act. And um, just last week, we did those opening up the Deer Hunter in New York. I mean, it's just... I mean, it's the only way to play in front of new people. It's so great. It's so sold out, and people came early, and they were packed, you know, just to see us. You know, and it was, I love playing in front of a lot of people, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, it, and, it, and it's low pressure, too, because, you know, they didn't, they didn't necessarily pay to see you. So um, it, it's just a great opportunity. And, I, you know, both of the fans kind of are old friends, and it's just it's going to be really great. Um, and the band uh, I'm playing with now, um, friends from New York, really, is Matt Fasti, who plays bass in MDMT, um, and then uh, a guy named Don Ethelady, who is really young and an awesome guitar player. He used to be in a band called Be Your Own Pet. Like, he used to yeah, yeah, okay. Be um, now 21. Wow. <laughs> Um, and then the drummer is James Canty, who plays in the pharmacist with Sophia, and he also oh. plays in the makeup and um, Kane and the Gang and all these bands to be seen. So it's, it's a great band that I'm super lucky to have. I'm playing, I mean, everyone's been really supportive. And... If you'd like more information about uh, Eleanor's tour, um, first off, actually, she will, she will be Monday, September 5th, in Vancouver, B.C., with the kills at the Commodore Ballroom. But as a special bonus, she will be at Zulu Records at 4 p.m. And for all other dates, please check her website at eleanorfriedberger.com, or you can check her Twitter, which is Eleanor only. That's it. And for more information about the show, please go to northerntransmissions.com, or please email us at northerntransmissions at gmail.com. Also follow us on Twitter at Northern Trans. Thanks again for listening, and thanks to the great producer, Andy Kalstrom. And let's listen to one final track. This is Roosevelt Island off the Merge Records release last summer. Yeah.